Hey guys, this is Prasad with a review of Android 4.3 on the 2012 model of the Nexus 7. So far, I've noticed that the system has overall gotten more responsive and slightly faster than it was before. Opening apps is just as quick as it was when I first got the tablet, and uh, most of the lag which was associated with Android 4.2.2 or the other Jelly Bean models after using them for a while has pretty much been gone and uh, the whole tablet runs smoothly for the most part. Like as you can see the transitions between all the animations are nice and I have noticed that during games and stuff the performance has improved a decent amount. Though one thing I can say safely is that custom kernels still easily beat Android 4.3. It's gone much better than it used to be but uh it's still not that great and uh, I'd still prefer a custom kernel and a custom ROM over uh, over this kind of stuff. Uh, in terms of benchmarks, uh, the Nexus 7 2012 model does uh, fairly worse than custom kernels. For example, let's just learn a, run a quick quadrant test. And in quadrant, the test completes pretty quickly, but uh, in terms of results, uh, as uh, you'll see later, uh, there's still a a uh, huge gap compared to custom kernels and custom ROMs. As you can see, the frame rate down there it's pretty solid at mostly at least around an average of probably 60 frames per second, maybe slightly higher at some points slightly lower at some points on the first test for quadrant. Uh, in the second test, hovering right, ho it's hovering right below that 60 frame per, uh, per second mark, which it's not bad, but not that great either. The DNA test also shows 60 frames per second, which is pretty good, I'd say. Okay, and the test is complete. Let's go check the results. And hold on, let's focus in right over there. And it says, your device, if you can, uh, if you guys can see that, it says 3,547, which puts it below the Transformer Prime as well as the HTC One X, which in my opinion is pretty bad, but considering Quadrant's fairly dated, uh, I would take this with a grain of salt. But uh, on custom kernels, I have easily seen the score rise above around, uh, over uh, to the high 5,000s where it's been like 5,800 to 6,000 easily without, uh, with minor overclocking and a bit of undervolting. So I'd still say the custom kernels are the best bet. In terms of Antutu, the results are kind of the same. The custom kernels easily uh, outweigh. I've already run the test over here, and as you can see, it scored uh, right under 12,000, uh, which is not bad at all. But again, compared to the custom kernels, it's uh, pretty bad. Uh, on the custom kernels, I usually scored around 15,000. Uh, Sometimes I got lucky and scored a 16,000 with uh, if I overclock the process processor to around uh, 1.7 gigahertz. But on stock speeds, uh, highest I've been able to get is like 1.5, oh, uh, 15,000 to 14,000 around somewhere there. So in terms of that, pretty like it's okay. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm I'm not really impressed by that. But other than that, the OS feels a lot smoother than the stock ROMs I used prior to that. And here's a more recent gaming benchmark, Epic Citadel, powered by the Unreal Engine. And here, we will benchmark this, and as you can see, it's a pretty solid looking demo. Everything looks really nice. In terms of frames per second, it's pretty much hovering on 60, around close to 60 for this part. Over here, it drops down to 40, which again is worse than my custom kernel experience. 
On the custom kernels, I was consistently at least 50 or higher. But then again, there was slight overclocking to the GPU and CPU. But it wasn't that much. It was only till uh, 1400 megahertz rather than the stock 1300. But in most of the sections, it's scoring fairly nicely with a consistent si uh, close to 60 frames per second experience. It's nice and buttery smooth, no problems there. But again, uh, if you're planning on upgrading from a custom ROM or something like that, I think you should just uh, stay with the custom ROM and maybe change kernels or something like that. But other than the FS trim feature, which is added to 4.3, uh, this is not really impressive in my opinion, and it's kind of disappointing. I was expecting a lot more performance leaps. And as we can see, the average FPS is 54.7 frames per second, uh, which is less than my uh, custom kernel. On the custom kernel, I got around uh, 56 to uh, 57, and if I overclocked it, I got uh, around uh, 59 frames per second. Uh, some of the new features with uh, Android 4.3 are just the uh, constant uh, Wi-Fi on feature. Uh, where, uh, hold on, where is it? Yep, right over here. If you can see it, scanning is always available. So that way, even if Wi-Fi is off, it'll still you let you uh, Google servers use like it'll still let you uh, uh, use Wi-Fi to get better location and that kind of stuff. Um, other than that, there's restricted profiles, but I haven't really found a use for that. It's like, okay, it's not that good. Like, in my opinion, like, if you're using that, it's a nice feature. Because if your kids, like, with all the recent uh, news stories about kids uh, putting credit card charges and in in-app purchases and that kind of stuff, it's good for that kind of stuff. But other than that, it's kind of useless in my opinion. Uh, but in terms of performance leaps, that's pretty much one of the major things. And as you can see, hold on, let me just go back really quick there. Uh, oopsies. Uh, right over here it is indeed running Android version 4.4.3. And it is a Nexus 7. Battery life on this is pretty much almost the same as I experienced better, but I found it out better on the custom kernels. On the custom kernels, I got around uh, with a few battery un uh, enhancements and uh, undervolting and that kind of stuff. I found myself getting around... Uh, a great um around on um, eight hours eight to nine hours of web browsing gaming that kind of stuff like everything mixed together like normal daily use I found that much battery life which uh, I thought was pretty impressive with this kernel I mean uh, with the stock ROM for 4.3 I've been getting a bit less than that around like uh, six to seven hours so overall I think if you're already at a custom kernel I think that you should just stay there just maybe change your kernel if you want but uh, if anyone's staying at stock I definitely recommend this update because uh, it's better than the five hour battery life I used to get on the stock kernel and uh, it's also much smoother like it's like project butter revisited kinda it just as a whole it's just a lot smoother everything just works more everything feels like kinda like when the Nexus 7 was new but other than that, guys, uh, I've had a great time review uh, reviewing Android 4.3, and uh, just uh, hit the like and subscribe button. This is my first video, and uh, I'm hoping to bring more videos. If you guys want to uh, request something which uh, you want me to install on the tablet or something like that, if you still want to purchase this tablet because nowadays you can buy it much cheaper than newer Nexus 7, so just like and subscribe uh, and. Uh